Welcome back. The first range that we discussed was weapons. The second range I would like to discuss is the kicking range. Uh, when somebody comes into a kicking range, to you, we have certain kicks that we can use. Uh, in many martial arts styles and systems, there's hundreds of different types of kicks that are available. But really, the most simplest kick that you have is a quick scoop kick or a front kick right to the groin. We are targeting the weak points on the body. This is the key here. The strategy that you employ is what's going to help you survive. You're not trying to do gross motions. You're not trying to block somebody. You're causing pain and damage right away. And you're going for the vital points. We're going to teach you how to go for the groin, teach you how to go for the eyes, go for the throat, go for the shins. That's our program, ETGS, Escape to Gain Safety. So as we go into now the kicking range, remember that radius, that radar around you. When somebody gets closer to you, if you extend your leg out, that is your kicking range. So if they've come into that range, this is when we employ that tool to kick the groin. Now, if somebody bridges the gap from the kicking range and comes in a little closer to what we call the punching or hand range, this is when we employ an eye jab, which is a simple open finger strike right to the eyes. Once again, going for the weak vital points in the eyes. I don't care how strong you are, how many times you've trained, you cannot train your eyes and you cannot train your groin to withstand such blows. We want to cause an impact, we want to cause uh, pain right away so that we can escape to gain safety. So in our acronym, ETGS, eyes, that's the first place we go to. So when somebody comes in past your kicking range, you go right to the eye with the eye jet. Now, oftentimes people don't just approach you that way and, and they have gotten a hold of you. They grab you, okay? So this is the grabbing range. They grab you on your hands, grab you on your throat, grab you in a chokehold. And this is all happening standing, okay? So this is the grabbing range. So we've gone from a kicking range and your tools for a kicking range, which is attacking the groin. Now from there you step into the hand range, and the hand range we go for the eyes. Now if you come past the hand range, that means they're right up close to you and they've got a hold of you, they've got a grab of you. And when somebody grabs you, you don't try to do uh, a wrist lock or an escape. We go right for the targets once again. Eyes, throat, groin, and shin. Because these are right there, they're easily accessible, and they cause a lot of pain. That instant moment of pain is what you have to take advantage of so that you can escape to gain safety. When you're unarmed, we are now looking at the ranges of combat, uh, the outer ring of your range, your radius, you could say, how I want you to have your radar, is going to be first defined by the kicking range. So I want to first show you what the kicking range is, it's really just an extension of my leg, and that defines the radius around me that is my kicking range. Uh, please come on in, John. See, John, at this range where he is for me, if I bring my leg out like this, this is going to be the kicking range. All right, it's very important that we understand the range of combat and which tools to deploy. If I try to hit him with my hands from here, he's too far away. So when he's encroaching, remember, we have to first communicate. Hands are up like this. Stop, stop, stop. Do not come forward. You have to verbalize as to what is happening to you. You have to let everybody know, and you have to assert yourself to your opponent. So I will demonstrate here with uh, John first as I want him to stop. And when he comes into my kicking range, we do a very simple kick. And the kick kind of looks just like this. John's going to be standing right here. I don't want to take my rear leg and come here. It's a little far, okay? So what I want to do here is I want to just use the front leg, and I'm going to scoop in like this, okay? And as I scoop in like this, what happens is my leg goes up like this, and I bring it back, okay? It's a scoop, and you just bring it back. So very slowly, hands are up, and I just scoop the kick. It's a scoop kick, a front snap kick to the groin. You're using your toes to hit the groin, okay, and cause a lot of pain. That's the main deal behind this. Once again, we cause pain so we can escape to gain some safety. As my attacker comes closer and encroaches upon the kicking range of combat over here, I'm just going to shuffle in really quickly and do a scoop kick to the groin as we demonstrated earlier. Really slowly, it looks like this. If he comes in, I'm just going to come here, boom! There's the kick to the groin. Okay, you got to make sure your hands stay up. This over here is a position that is warning the person, stop, stop, stop. You also have your hands up in position in case they come any closer to you. Okay, so one more time, the way we would like to train this for you at home and work it would be the following. Stop, stop, do not come forward. And that is going to be your scoop kick to the groin. Stop! Oh. 
You've just now seen the practical application and the demonstration of the scoop creep to the groin and the kind of damage that it can cause. Um, like I said, you cannot condition your groin. So it's one of the areas that is a vital point in the body. Our whole program is designed for going after the vital points in the body so that we don't have to rely on strength, size, and speed to overcome our opponent. You see, strength, size, and speed diminish with age. Strength, size, and speed are also relative to you and your opponent. The strategy has to be universal. And if the strategy is universal, then you can employ it in combat and once again escape to gain safety. The way we're going to train this at home is you can easily get a focus mitt, go down to your big five, go down to any uh, sports store over there, and find a glove, a mitt, any kind like this, and you put it on your hand. Okay? You put it on your hand, you take your other hand over and put it like so. And what you're going to do is give a target of a groin just like this. I'm going to have my assistant come on in, and she's going to get practice now shuffling in and kicking. Go. Boom, okay, and again, boom, and again, boom, okay, and again, boom. And you, as you can see, I'm feeling quite a bit of an impact at the bottom of my glove over here. It's also teaching my student how to make contact. You can't be kicking in the air. If you're just kicking in the air and you have to kick somebody for real, you don't want to wait for that time for that kind of thing to happen. So it's very simple. Go out, get a glove, hold it here. That's your groin. That's the target, okay, and you kick the target. Now, I was standing stationary that time, and what I want to do now is give this forward pressure. Nobody just stands there like that. That's the one option. They walk towards you. Now, I ask my assistant to come on in one more time. Okay, she assumes the position. That's also very important. When you're working, hitting the focus mitts, you're also verbalizing. You see, if you don't practice verbalizing and practice getting your energy out, practice showing the person that you are not going to be assaulted, then you're not going to do it when it comes up. So I want you to really pay attention to how she verbalizes as I approach forward and then the kick, you hear the kick, and then she runs away to escape to gain safety. Go. Stop! Stop! Don't come closer! It's very simple, guys. This is not something that takes years of training. This is something that has to do with strategy and skill and using the correct moves at the correct time with the right range, okay? So when somebody comes in, they're in your kicking range. She does not let me get past the kicking range. She's not waiting for me to come grab her. She has identified somebody that is trying to hurt her. And when she identifies that, she verbalizes it. And as soon as she verbalizes it, boom! As soon as I come into the range, the kick is employed. Instantaneous pain happens. That is your moment to steal a beaten time and escape to gain safety. Okay, you have just learned the kicking range, the radius of combat that you're learning. When somebody comes into the range, when you extend your leg out, that's your kicking range. Now sometimes you don't have the liberty of being in that range, and you, when you realize the person's already right there, you look and they're right there. So they're in a range where they haven't yet grabbed a hold of you, but they're in striking range of your hand, okay? So I'd like to bring Rocky in here. Now if you notice, if Rocky, if all I'm doing is I'm talking to you guys and all of a sudden I look over and here Rocky is, it's kind of difficult for me to get a kick up and try to kick him over here, okay? So what I instantly can do is a turn, boom, and take an eye jab really quickly, okay? That's the idea. So it's being able to, once again, from here, this is your position. If you have your hands up right here, you're communicating to your opponent, your attacker, do not come forward, that's the most important thing. It is your energy that you bring forward that you will not be victimized. If they are too close now, so they bridge the gap, they're no longer in a range in which there you see them coming and you can kick them. So they're a little bit closer. So Rocky, come on even a little closer. So I am not aware of where Rocky is at. And all of a sudden I'm aloof. I wasn't paying attention to what's happening and my attacker is right over here. As I turn over here, here he is. Now, there's no time here to do anything else except extend my hand to the eyes and retract. Extend your hand to the eyes and retract. Okay? So even if we were facing each other like this, you see, the kicking range, it's too close. I don't have time to do it. But I can easily reach and go to the eyes. So you see the radius is if you extend your hand out, this is your hand range. Okay? Rock, take one step back, please. Now, you see, I can't get him with the hand, so I can come and get him with the kick. Okay, it's very important that you understand that the timing at which we have to use these moves. Otherwise, it won't work, and it makes your life a lot more difficult. Stop! Uh. Stop! Uh. 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 OK, 
Okay, welcome back. As now you've seen the uh, practical application of when somebody encroaches past your kicking range, you're startled. You have to verbalize what's happening, but you don't have much time to react. So they're in your hand range and you fire off the eye jab. That is your move for the, the hand combat range. Now I would like to show you how we train this. And once again, using your simple pad, okay, you can get this at any kind of store, any kind of sports athletic goods store. And what you're going to do is you're going to hold it at the height of your eyes like this mimicking the target. So once again, the student gets an opportunity to actually make contact, to make a, 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 an impact, so they understand what it's like to make contact. Many women are really afraid to hit. You have to get over that fear. This is something that can really save you. Okay, come on in, please. So, as you see, I just hold it right here to my eyes. I'm not moving right now, and she's just gonna take reps of hitting to the eyes. Go ahead, boom. Okay, now come on a little closer, okay? And now what I'd like you to do is actually come to this side, and you're just gonna face forward, and just like the scenario we had before, somebody has crept up on you, and here it is. You're gonna turn and hit. That's it. Now also verbalize for me, so stop, turn, and hit. Stop! Good, and one more time. Stop! Okay, excellent. Now you see, we start first without any footwork, any movement, so you get an idea of turning, acquiring where the target is, and then going for your move. It's very important that you do that. It's simple. You only need about 50 of these reps and it's going to be ingrained in your body. Okay, the next thing I want to do is I want to start to move a little forward. Give that forward pressure. Nobody just stands there. So it's the same idea again. She has her hands up, she turns, she startles, she says stop. Her hands are in a position to defend herself. And from that position, she launches the eye jab. Once again, getting used to training the way you would feel to somebody approaching you and learning how to come make contact and then causing a moment of pain to escape the gate safety. Stop! Stop! Now, the next thing we're going to do is put the eye jab in combination with the scoop kick. Hey, you have one target here, and you have one target here. As soon as you've gone to the eyes, sometimes there's a moment in time where you follow up with a shot to the groin, but when you don't stay there, you escape to gain safety. I'd just like to show you how to practice this in a combination. As you can see, this is very simple. This doesn't take years of training. It's about your awareness. It's about understanding what is happening. Just like learning how to drive a car. When you come to a stop sign, you have to stop. When you're changing lanes, you have to look over your shoulder. You have to practice looking over your shoulder a hundred times? No. But this is the idea. It's about awareness. It's about you understanding what you're capable of doing. What's happening. Employing the strategy. And these are strategies that have worked from time immemorial.